I will give her vineyards there, and the valley of suffering for a door of hope, and she shall sing there as in the days of her youth. Rhonda Lazert Ministries welcomes you to the door of hope. Welcome to Door of Hope. It's a pleasure to be with you. As I mature in my faith with, as a Christian, believing that Christ is my Lord and Savior, and as I read the New Testament uh, closely, uh, you pick up uh, aspects of the precious Word of God that perhaps uh, you don't hear so often uh, in assembly. And as I was reading the book of Acts, and I have uh, spoken from time to time that I believe that the book of Acts is the promised land uh, for the Christian. And knowing that and reading it and realizing that he has come to give us life and life abundantly, uh, in other words, resurrection life, uh, I follow Paul's words and lately I have been drawn to the mature books of Peter. Uh, we sometimes put Peter back in the garden where he's denying the Lord three times and weeping bitterly. But Peter goes on uh, as he serves God as the realization that Christ was the Savior of the world. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Uh, I meet Paul and I found these uh, precious, precious words in the book of Acts chapter 20. And he puts it this way. He said about repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus. And this is the, the captivating scripture. And now as a captive to the spirit, I'm on my way to Jerusalem. Well, we're not Paul, but the language of Holy Scripture is that Paul is realizing that he is captive to the spirit. And what does that exactly mean? Uh, it means a great deal. It really means resurrection life for us. And if, I, if we look back over our lives, we will see that a lot of our maturing points or our faith uh, is anchored in God's sovereignty, in his destiny for our lives. I know for me, I began a deeper journey with the loss of a son and realizing that life is short, whether you live a few days or a few months, a few years, or many long years, it comes to an end. And as the minister said a couple of weeks ago, we have to get it right. Uh, that eternal life is in his name, in the name of Jesus Christ. We must believe in Christ and then we are saved. And so the resurrection life process begins and we're on a journey and the sovereignty of God places us in certain times and spots and we respond to where we're at and hopefully we respond with, you know, I, I like the Our Father, the prayer that Jesus uh, teaches the disciples, and he says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And really in a summary to being captive to the spirit of that precious prayer, I lift my hands up to God often when I pray that and I praise him and give him thanks and glory and understand that it is God's will ruling in my life and I'm responding to that, uh, what he is doing, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Uh, we're, we're too much kind of in a self-helps program where we think we can purify ourselves or we're in charge, but truly we're not. Uh, but it is our response of our heart that we give to God and the circumstances are up to him. It says that it is not a man or woman to direct uh, their own path. So if we turn to the book of Peter, and I plan to go through uh, these two, uh, two books carefully with you in the coming uh, telecasts, I just love them. I found something uh, so wonderful. And if we look at the first book of Peter, and uh, he says, chosen and destined by God the Father, sanctified by the Spirit, to the obedience to Jesus Christ and to be sprinkled with his blood. And then he starts by saying, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance 
that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last times. So here we have that inheritance, that gift of God's Holy Spirit in our lives given to us that we might know him and in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. And Peter uh, goes on as a mature um, uh, brother in Christ, as a saint, uh, going on to say that he's being protected by the power of God. Uh, He's being kept and there's a personal destiny for him uh, that he is willing to walk and in, in, in fact has no choice but to walk that. And do we as believers have much of a choice? Uh, yes, in our responding, we can dig our heels in, and many do, but it doesn't work. Uh, you know, I've tried feeling sorry for myself a few times, but, you know, I, you know in the oil of joy, I talk about crying until my head was so hot I couldn't bear it and finding after a point of grief, it didn't help to grieve anymore. And so then what, what shall we do? I learned to lift my hands unto God, uh, begin to, uh, man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, began to read the scriptures a little, and because the scriptures are spiritual food, spiritual meat for us, they give us direction, they're non-negotiable actually, they make these statements that are loud or clear, and as we place our hand in the master's hand and attempt to go forward, the spirit of God, being captive to the spirit, is there moving us along. And it's a, it, it's a joyous journey. Uh, it's, it's better than being angry, it's better than being sorrowful, it's better than anything else I've ever experienced that hand in the master's hand and that journey of resurrection life. And that's what Peter uh, finds, that uh, an inheritance undefiled, uh, it's there for us. And as we plug in, you know, with that three-pronged plug, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and as we move forward, the Spirit of God, captive to his spirit, uh, moves us onward. So reading more of Peter, He's, he reveals the place for suffering. It says, in this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you've had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold, that though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you've not seen him, you love him, And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your soul. So isn't that wonderful? It explains that, yes, trials occur, but they're for a divine purpose. And uh, the outcome of that all is the salvation of our precious souls. And again, as the minister said, we have to get it right. We have to understand in this life that it's just the first step in our journey, that we're on a uh, a spiritual road. We're hopefully led by the spirit, captive to the spirit. And that journey is resurrection life. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's what I've found that uh, as I'm maturing, I've moved past the a place of grief and sorrow to a place where, you know, the oil of joy instead of mourning. It's there, I wake up with it, um, and I go to bed with it. It's, it's there most of the time. Uh, and uh, how good is that? How wonderful is that, that you have joy in your heart uh, by the power of God's Holy Spirit, that you are enjoying resurrection life, uh, the hope of glory, And as we journey, uh, we remember Christ's words, I go to prepare a place for you. And uh, it's, you know, uh, nothing beats that. What else is offered in this short span of life here on planet Earth, but these uh, words of life uh, that God has prepared a place for us, that we're journeying, we're en route, by his Holy Spirit, captive to the Spirit, 
captive to his Holy Spirit, that we might step by step, uh, it said, Isaiah said, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little, here a little, there a little. And this is just the first chapter of Peter, where he lays it out so firmly and so clearly for us that uh, uh, because we know that uh, nothing can compare uh, to that. Reading on, he says, therefore prepare your minds for action. Discipline yourself, set all your hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring you when he is revealed. And then carrying on, it says, you know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. And there he goes, we've been redeemed. Uh, and to prepare our minds, to prayer, prepare our hearts, it isn't going to just fall on us. Uh, it takes a response from us. It takes a commitment uh, from us to uh, walk that path, that uh, path of the Spirit, uh, rather than, it's, it's more than law, it's more than editing your life and, and saying, uh, you know, I, I won't do this and I won't do that. It's a, it's an ever-increasing faith. It's our capacity to hear the Spirit of God in our lives directing us. I, I didn't know such a world existed, you know, that God would actually speak to me uh, and direct my life in a personal way uh, in trials, but in blessings as well, that I might know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship and the futile ways of my journey otherwise, I could lay that aside because futility is futility. It doesn't get you anywhere. Uh, it's, a, it's a path that is a dead end. And in the Spirit of God, we're not on a dead end road. We're on an ever-increasing faith, captive to the Spirit of the living God who uh, calls us friend, brother, um, so many intimate uh, names. He's the lover of our souls. Uh, he loves us with an eternal, everlasting love. And he says, uh, he's always saying to us, be not afraid, but put your hand in my hand and walk with me. And uh, it just overtakes your life. And uh, something is there, that resurrection life, that power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, think back of Stephen, a young man being stoned. And in his last moments of life, heaven is open to him. And he sees Jesus at the right hand of the Father standing to receive him. And Stephen is able to pass, make that journey from the earthly realm uh, to the heavenly realm with, I, I think, pr probably not feeling anything, uh, but rather overcome with a sense that God is receiving him receiving him because of his faith in him. So Peter, going back to chapter 2, I just, he says, your God's sight like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices. And he goes on to say, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So that's, that's it said so clearly, who has called us, called me out of darkness, called me out of sorrow, suffering, into his marvelous light, to a path of righteousness, a path of rejoicing, a royal priesthood, a uh, uh, a holy people. Uh, I do believe, I like Martin Luther's uh, writings on the priesthood of all believers uh, as uh, no rich, no poor, no, just everyone's equal, male or female. Uh, the priesthood of all believers that we have the capacity, we are all captive by the Spirit and because of His Spirit we go on marching to Zion. Remember those great hymns, marching to Zion, marching to Zion. It just, uh, you know, we're here, we're, we're whole. We are not caught in futility, uh, but are marching 
ever onward and upward, and it doesn't disappear. Uh, what we gain in God, we keep. Isn't that a wonderful thing? You can't keep anything else in this life. It doesn't matter uh, what you get, it fades away eventually. Uh, no matter what a treasure you thought it was, you change or it becomes old or you lose your aptitude. But in God, what we gain, we keep. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise be to God. We're set free from futile ways. Isn't that a treasure? set free from it, shown another door, another path. And as Peter uh, goes on to say, he makes it so clear. He says, Beloved, I urge you as aliens and exiles to abstain from the desires of the flesh that wage against, that war against the soul. Conduct yourselves honorably among the Gentiles so that though they malign you as evildoers, they may see your honorable deeds and glorify God when he comes to judge. And then he goes on to say in the last second chapter, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. So if I was going to uh, use a verse to describe my life, how I feel on the inside, and some of you are in need of that. Some of you will say, yes, amen. That's how I feel as well. Uh, but by his wounds, I have been healed. By his wounds, we are made whole. He takes the sorrow and the grief and the disappointment, the futility, and by being captive to the Spirit, by the power of his Holy Spirit at work in our lives, he heals us. He heals us. Sometimes we... We're trying to dial in up here, as I say from time to time, for that healing. Uh, but it is an extension. Uh, it's a flow out of the captivity of the spirit and that wholeness that comes within us. And uh, what flows out from us is all praise, all honor, and all glory to Jesus Christ. And we go to bed with that. We wake with it. We encourage our hearts with that. We rejoice in him. And I, you know, the, one of the first verses uh, that I learned that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will never, never perish but have eternal life. And that's what those words of being healed. And then for someone who's known a couple of rather enormous healings in my life, they were... Uh, a flow out. They were, uh, they were a byproduct of that captivity of the spirit. You know, I once said that to someone and they, they didn't like it. They thought um, I was talking about earning my healing and it wasn't so at all. I was talk, talking about being captive to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of holiness, purity, health, truth, just everything. And because of making that connection and allowing growth, spiritual growth in my life that I found that I have been healed. Hallelujah. I still pray. I still I have needs, but I just find there's a wholeness there uh, that I can connect with a lot easier than I did when I started out my journey uh, and hearing the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world and wondering how that would really affect me? What did that really have to do with me? Well, plugging in and believing that he is the Lamb of God who has taken away my sin, your sin, and because of that uh, connection with him and that unity in the spirit, uh, the outcome, it says, is, as we read earlier, the salvation of our souls, the healing of our minds, the healing of our bodies the healing of our spirits. It's as good as it gets. So you'd say, well, how do I grow then? You know, I'm not you and you, everyone has their own experiences. It, Paul says we grow by prayer, by the word, by fellowship, by communion, by the giving of thanks, by obedience to his word. It's a, it's a step at a time. And uh, I am so encouraged that when I didn't know that where the next step was, that somehow by the Spirit I was able to find it. I was able to continually move forward. 
step forward and receive and be on the right path for me, not a path of destruction, uh, not a path of destruction, but the right path for me so that I could move forward and continue experiencing that wholeness of his Holy Spirit in my life. And it's as good as it gets. I've had some of the other. You'll relate to me in that when we're on the wrong path and it's not going anywhere. Uh, and yet that God so loves us that he uh, puts us on a different journey. And beginning uh, as I began with hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise, with a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord. And the fact is, nobody can do it for you. You're going to have to do it for yourself. Um, it's good to have others pray for you. It's uh, general assembly is great, uh, but you're going to have to decide yourself uh, which path you want to be on. Choose you this day, life or death. And God isn't going to going to, he isn't going to penalize you, he isn't going to say, well, you don't qualify, uh, you're too much water under the bridge. It says, whosoever will may come. And so you have to decide for yourself which path, the futile path or the path of the spirit, being captive to the spirit, and the outcome of that, the salvation of your soul. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, I, I say it feels like I won the lottery. If you have the guarantee of eternal life, if you get it right, God says, I go to prepare a place for you and I will bring you unto myself. And I'm so thrilled to know those words of life, to be held captive to the spirit by the grace and mercy of God. Lord, we bow before you to pray and to give thanks perhaps for some to begin that journey of the spirit for the first time, confessing that they recognize Christ as their Lord and Savior and ask for your forgiveness for uh, their sins or iniquities. But Lord, we go beyond that. We place our hand in your hand, in the master's hand and say, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. And so we thank you together we thank you together, Lord, for being captive to your Holy Spirit. And as Peter matured and wrote these words, these spiritual words for us, they direct us, they lead us. And we are so grateful for these words of life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're so grateful for salvation in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. Heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he made the lame to walk again And caused the blind to see I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood's atoning Then I repented of my sins And won the victory Oh, victory in Jesus my Savior forever Well, He sought me and He bought me With His redeeming blood He loved me ere I knew Him And all my love is due Him He plunged me into a victory Beneath the cleansing blood I heard about His healing of his cleansing power revealing how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see and then i cried dear jesus come and heal my broken spirit and somehow jesus came and brought to me the victory oh victory in jesus my savior forever well, he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me into a victory beneath 
dat lens in blood. I heard about a mansion is built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. Well, he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me into a victory beneath the cleansing blood. Oh, victory. Jesus, my Savior forever. Well, he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me into a victory beneath the cleansing blood. Uh, it says man ought always to pray and not faint. So we're here on the prayer line to pray with you, uh, to help you a little if you have some questions, but mostly to join together in spirit, uh, to pray together that you might begin that journey of faith or move forward by his grace and mercy, uh, to leave a life of futility to a life where you may know him, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. At resurrection life. Uh, the books that I've written, um, they are about that journey of mine. They're largely how the scriptures unfolded in my life and apply to me. Uh, the God box is about my healing and really how that happened and that pattern uh, that I have noticed again and again. And then the Song of Solomon, the overview of where we begin and where we end up. They're they're with the Word of God. They're uh, user-friendly helps to you that you can uh, read through them. And, you know, there's one Lord, one Christ, one baptism. Our, our journeys are very similar. Uh, but most important, the Word of God stands, stands forever. And it directs us. It leads us. It assures us. Uh, so I recommend those to you uh, by His grace and mercy so that you can grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And we're here on the prayer line. I do need your support to carry on just to pay my bills. And I thank those who, who remember uh, Door of Hope uh, since it started 28, 29 years ago. So God bless you. Take care and have a great week.